Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Dirks, and on behalf of Choice and ACRL, I'd like to welcome you to our program today, uh, Closing the Gaps with Professional Development Strategies to Support Educators in a Changing Learning Environment, which is sponsored by Infobase. Today's discussion is one in a series of sponsored webinars from ACRL and Choice that addresses new ideas, developments, and products of interest to the academic library community. Free to users, these structured 60 minute live presentations provide the opportunity for interactive discussions of important new issues and developments in academic librarianship by librarians, vendors, authors, and other interested stakeholders. Before we get started, I'd like to point out just a couple of features of the webinar software. Um, for all of you joining us today, um, thank you for doing so. And please know that when you join the presentation, you are automatically muted and your cameras are off. So please don't worry about uh, generating noise or feedback or anything like that. We've got that taken care of for you. Um, of course, in the main area of the screen, you should be able to follow along with the presentation materials. And today uh, we're using the Q&A feature. So if you have questions for either of our panelists um, at any point during the presentation, please feel free to drop your questions in that little Q&A module. Um, we'll take a little time at the end of the presentation to answer as many questions as we can get to. Um, so as I said, please do drop your questions in that Q&A module um, whenever they occur to you. Also note that we are recording today's program and that everyone who registered should receive a follow-up email with a link um, to that archive version of the presentation. Um, before we get started, I would just mention that our speakers today are Brad Gray. Um, Brad is uh, the product portfolio manager at Infobase and Natalie Murray um, is a product manager at Infobase. So with that, um, I think we are ready to get started and I will turn things over um, to Brad and Natalie. Good afternoon. Thank you everyone for joining us. As Mark said with his introduction, my name is Natalie Murray. I'm a product manager at Infobase where I oversee our learning cloud product. And I'm excited to bring you some thought leadership about how we can help bridge some gaps that we found, especially since the COVID-19 pandemic when it comes to professional development. So Brad, if we wanna start with our next slide. Um, I'm sure like many of you, I am a big fan of Reddit. And when we were preparing for this presentation, I came up across this quote from uh, user Lionheart724. I think it might be making some of the social media rounds as well. Uh, a degree in education is like going to culinary school. You learn the basics, a few cool party tricks, and by the end, you can cook a few gourmet meals. Teaching, however, is like waking up every day on an episode of Chopped, where the ingredients are completely random. You're expected to do something amazing with whatever your hand did and while people watch and provide a running commentary. And occasionally something catches fire. <laughs> I think all educators and librarians felt something akin to this when we were faced with the pandemic last year. It exposed gaps in how successfully our institutions and organizations have been able to deliver quality remote instruction where we might have amazing tools and content, those tools and content don't have as great an impact as they can if our educators or patrons are not trained on how to use them effectively in a virtual setting. So I believe last March, like many of you, everyone scrambled to transition their faculty, their students and their staff to remote workplace situations, to remote learning. And this illuminated those gaps in, on training and how to best use our resources. You may have had video meetings sporadically. And if you're anything like me, thank you, Brad. You now have them all day, every day. <laughs> there are days when uh, I probably am on Zoom meetings, you know, a solid six hours a day now. That's completely different than pre-March of 2020. We had in-person work and learning envi environments. 
you know, we had some institutions that did online instruction really well, and some were putting their toe in the water. But since March 2020, we've had a new reliance on technology and these remote environments, extensive video conferencing. I think we've all seen the video with the lawyer who turned himself into a cat, <laughs> you know, making our patrons, our staff, our educators confident in their technology skills is something that is not easy to do. I think pre-pandemic, many of us thought about professional development as a nice to have, but COVID has really taught us that it is a need to have. It's essential. We have these great tools. We need to train ourselves and the people we serve on how to use those tools effectively. Brad, next slide, please. So what do they need training in? Um, we need to provide training to our patrons in software and technology training, online instructional strategies, and adapting to changing environments. Providing this kind of instruction will empower and motivate educators. It'll improve effectiveness in this new environment for both educators and staff. It's going to build confidence for both your staff and your patrons. And it's going to provide your students with essential skills they're going to need for our post COVID world. More and more companies and organizations are going to fully remote environments. We want our students, no matter what type of institution you're part of, to be successful. Learning how to manage yourself, manage your time, use technology in a remote environment are essential life skills that we need to teach them. We also need to teach them online. <laughs> That's how we're reaching them. How do we do that effectively? Brad, next slide, please. So we have the issue that we need to provide this professional development and training for being effective online. And we need to do so effectively by instructing online. <laughs> Um, how do we do that? What makes instruction online effective? Uh, the great thing is on the info-based learning cloud, I have learned a lot about what makes online instruction impactful and effective. And um, I've listed them here. Like the secret sauce for effective online instruction is ensuring that the information you're presenting has demonstrable outcomes. After someone learns it, they can do the task, or they can take a assessment or quiz that says they've mastered those materials. It's not just passive learning. They're coming away with an outcome, a student learning outcome. Um, we're effective online instruction adapts existing instruction to an online platform. So I know even for myself, I recently took a professional development course with a pragmatic institute framework and it was all online. They for years had done it uh, always in person, but following our framework here at InfoBase, it was adapted very well to be online. It's never gonna be exactly the same as maybe when in the classroom you taught information literacy, but it can be adapted and effective and it should be effective online. It should be easy to understand. Anyone could read it. Anyone could learn it, whether they have a background in the material or not. It should be engaging. It should make your, want, your learner want to continue to take the course, to finish it, and to take those skills and use them right away. It should be composed of micro-learning. So micro-learning is the idea of um, learning in short instances to keep that engagement. So maybe if you have uh, 40 minutes of video content on how to use Zoom, we break it up into videos of under two minutes that are easier to consume. That's micro learning. Perhaps it could be a reading that is you know, shorter than two or three minutes. Easy to consume, a low, low expectation from the learner but it builds upon itself until they finally complete the course. You also want the content to be from subject matter experts. That's one of the benefits of 
online remote instruction, you can have the world-class minds and thought leaders, subject matter experts, them and their information presented to you and to your students, no matter where you're located. Um, you also want the ability to have some administrative capabilities to be able to assign content and exercises to learners. You also want to be able to assess learning results and review those reports regularly. So we here at InfoBase have taken all those effective online strategies and created a patented process-based pathway for online instruction. We make it very simple where you learn something, you do it, you share it, and you prove it. So a learn it is where you are presented with materials. Um, in an online course, like on our platform, it could be video, it could be PDFs or PowerPoints, but it is content that is consumed on the subject matter. Our do it is an exercise. It could be uh, a PDF with a reflection. It could be um, something to grade where you know you yourself, if you're learning a new instructional strategy, maybe you're learning to provide effective feedback to your students, but it's an exercise based on the material you pre presented in the learning. And then we share it. You take your exercise and you can share it with our community. You can look to other learners from your course and learn how they did the materials, how they completed the exercise, as well as share your own to get feedback from the community. And to cap off your course, you want your learner to prove it. Take an assessment. This is a quiz based on the materials learned in the learn it and the do it. Once the quiz is successfully completed, then your learner has demonstrated that they've achieved those student learning outcomes that were defined at the beginning of the course. That once they took this course, they learned A, B, and C, they can do D and they can do it well and use it right away as a student, a staff member, or an educator. Our goal is that after this taking an online course with us that is effective. They can take the professional development and training, those tools that they learned and immediately positively impact their students and patrons. So Brad, I know you have some information to share as well. Sure. Thank you, Natalie. And thank you again, everybody, for joining. Uh, again, this it's been a few minutes. Uh, my name is Brad Gray. I work in, in our business area across InfoBase, working with libraries and academic institutions of every shape and size and business around the world. So it's fascinating to see the consistency that people have relating to adapting to, to providing this digital education uh, as an exclusive way of doing it, an essential way of doing it. And some people, just couldn't wait to do it. And now they had an opportunity to do it. Some people still don't like it. Some people have a challenge with it. And that's where the gaps come in. The, the thing that everyone can applaud themselves on is that everyone is doing it. Everyone has created their instruction at, you know, from the perspective of if you're a leader instructing a classroom or you're an educator creating curriculum or creating a, a, a syllabus that then a number of teachers across department uh, do, or you're a graduate student and you're creating a lab that then everybody executes across the lab, all the different students that do, that lead the lab as TAs or whatever, everyone does it. But what we've found consistently in every nook and tranny of the United States, as well as around the world, is that everybody's doing it, it uh, in a different way, both out of survival, some out of having a tool that you use regularly. But the one things we hear most currently is that they've got the content that they want to share, but they don't have a really effective way to present it, assign it, assess it, but they've actually done the work and then be able to apply it across the, the, the syllabus that you're trying to convey across the course of the semester or the quarter or the trimester, whoever you're organized. So at InfoBase, we've been at this uh, that problem for 80 years now. We've been uh, dealing with authoritative content from a variety of reference and video platforms both physically and then online, as well as, you know, in the cloud and then downloadable things, you name it, we're all over. 
But one thing that we've found that's really been needed, and that's something that Natalie alluded to before, was called the learning cloud. And that is providing a way to provide a platform from which that you can use the content that you have from us uh, or the authoritative content that you might have from us from a variety of uh, subscriptions and so on that we offer. But then more, almost equally or more importantly too, is that you can take the educational backbone that you've created for all your courses over the course of the years or decades and apply it here. You can upload it, you can add it, you can link to it, you can blog from it, you can do all these different things that has to this point been very difficult to do. And once you create your course or create what will be, I'll show you as a pathway, a whole collection of, of courses together, uh, if you so chose, you can then connect it with your own credentialing tools that you connect right to your students with, whether you use Canvas or Blackboard or any of the other utilities that do that, that kind of run the, ecosystem within the within your institution. So there's lots of different things to do it. So another thing we found when we've talked with uh, the academic uh, leaders around the world, most recently in the last year, is that there's just too many people asking for things and no real way to really understand where to get the results. So we use a, a, a really kind of moderately humorous uh, search. So when we were preparing this, we did a similar kind of presentation uh, recently with a very specific type of academic communities. And so we did a search to test ourselves. And we came back with 554 million results and doing a general search on how to teach on, uh, during COVID. It's incredible. Then just to, just to prove a point, we, we typed in a generic thing that, you know, the, the kind of the random meaningless type searches and this way it was on puppies and we had you know millions less searches so you can think how can somebody narrow down or solve a problem or reduce their anxiety about how to offer something online uh, when there's 554 million responses and and also then once you do that how do you take your existing materials whether it's a pdf or even a physical item and get it in a position to offer it in a curriculum that you currently have that you want to present online. So we've done that with uh, what we call the learning cloud. It's, it's a learning pathway, both existing content that we provide, but then we also have the engagement tool that faculty uh, are looking for. And that's where we're getting a lot of usage of it, is individuals that have this are utilizing it to upload and present their own materials through it and augment what we've got together in that kind of environment. So you'd be able to offer that student engagement level, both with your own existing course material, augment it with our material, use our material as the course material and everywhere in between. So that is a really key thing about serving that gap is, take, is, is bridging that, how you've been working across the, your in-person, uh, curriculum and turning it into online. May seem like you've been doing this and it's like, oh, why are we talking about it? You'd be amazed that over the course of the year, everyone's had to adapt and then also readapt as sometimes you now have students in your classroom, whereas 80% of your the class might still be remote. So you have to adapt even further how you're doing it as a hybrid model. It, it's just an amazing thing in academic uh, communities how, how it's changed. One thing that we know that is consistent and it's just getting a larger level of uh, attention is how the students want to consume and are finding value in consuming the material over the course of their, of their, of their week. They have to be driven to attend the class online. They actually need to uh, do the, their homework, the, any assignments while they're doing other things. They don't necessarily always have that dedicated time like a traditional class would be to be able to do it. And you know whether they're an athlete or they're in some sort of app campus activity that they can't attend the class live, they still can get it done in time for the assignment is due or the next class. And so students are learning in a variety of ways. And many of them were equipped from this when they went from high school into college, many weren't. Many say they were, but they realized that the pace of college education is, is much faster. And so they need to adapt how they learn. So they learn in three primary different ways. They wanna do instant skill review. That's that micro learning uh, reference that the Natalie drew and that's what the majority do. 
very rare that we've found um, that they go from beginning to end of their exercise or their homework without stopping. They're, they're interrupted for whatever reason or they don't have the time, but they've learned the ability to learn in segments and then build upon it. And that is something that um, Learning Cloud recognizes and, and it, we actually we've built the segmentation of all the recording of the, of the, the material that you can consume the content that way. They also want to master the skill. They want to prove to themselves that they know what they're doing, whether they're, they're learning and going through all the different methods of that we make as available to them to get to the point of proving it, which would be like doing the test or doing the assessment. Uh, they can do that as well. And then in many of them, particularly those that are upperclassmen, they want to be able to, to certify or verify that what they've learned is going to take them to the next level. Well, obviously, their CV is going to say what course they completed and what grade, pass, fail, or the, you know, the typical A, A, B, C kind of uh, grade system. But then when they're dealing with skills, the supplementary skills, uh, platforms like this allow that individual to also show that their mastery of soft skills or their mastery of a particular technique within a class. Like you can become a master at Excel as a result of taping, taking macroeconomics or a business course or a math course or even a science course. It doesn't matter. They're just so cross-disciplinary. And then the faculty has the ability to assign those, those skills, assign those courses, and it totally enriches the environment of their particular uh, education. We do that in a way to reinforce the, the, the thought leadership side of what the information is that an individual is learning across literacy, way to be critical thinkers, how to be prepared for their career, how to prepare for their next level of, of, um, of learning, because they'll never stop learning. And there's that expectation, particularly with the typical college student age, they're so used to it. And in these micro learning ways, they're just constantly learning a little bits at a time as they're going through their, their life as well. So this reinforces that capability. For the faculty, it really helps them connect with curriculum support. They now know that there are, are tools that are gonna help them shape and mold what they've been doing all along, but now in an online format, but then also creating them a utility to actually execute it, to actually do it, to prove that when they learn that new instructional strategy or that curriculum tool, they can actually apply it with the material that they want to do. It's just really great. Then, if your uh, institution is upgraded, their LMS, they you know they change the new version of Blackboard or Canvas or whatever, they have that capability to uh, refine that knowledge in a very micro learning way. So just like the students learn in a micro uh, way, in that micro learning way, or they they can also do that as well themselves. And the, and the administrative side of the, of the platform also then helps guide them through the assignment, the assessing of where those students are engaging in the course or not, and then knowing how to follow up with them. And then also assessing the, the, how, what their practical skill is for reporting their particular outcome. And then the utility of updating what, of what they're working on. It's also interesting within it that not, all one size does not fit all. Like I was mentioning, not everybody learns the same way with the micro learning or skills mastery learning. It's the same with what you need to get started. Whether you just need a, a platform to pour your own material in and then augment it with, uh, with other collections, fine. Or we have built-in things that are available to help you based on where you find yourself in, in, in an academic setting. The most common ones are related to helping the instructors prepare themselves for uh, expanding their professional development in how to develop their own instruction or their courses or LMS tools and so on. Uh, the newest one, probably the most popular one in this last year has been how to serve diverse populations. Whether you're dealing with a college age um, executive function, a situation for the variety of who your students are when they come to campus and how they evolve during their campus life, or, or simply, how to deal with the, the variety of the students and where they find themselves with different technical inequities or they're just the different levels of where they find themselves. It, it adds an extra dimension to just the standard instruction. We also have things just on clear technology skill acumen, like how to use Zoom, how to use Excel, how to use Adobe, 
how to do, you name it. There's hundreds of options that there's available to them to help them brush up on a specific aspect or full on skills mastery of a particular skill. And then just hundreds of soft skills. The career center is also an area where there's been a lot of demand, a lot of needs that you, let's say you as, a, as an educator have it down and have your things organized. The career centers had to adapt and pivot how they actually are serving these students because they're not seeing them or they're helping them get uh, interviews and internships and jobs and where to go in a way that it's not that normal hand-to-hand -hand, uh, kind of counseling or mentoring that they're offering. It's just a difference. So there's a lot of different types of uh, needs that they need as well, all with that toolkit to upload what you currently have and best practices and, you know, uh, you know, lists of who, you know, courses of lists of who's hired, you know, graduates from your particular university, et cetera. All that stuff is available to upload into this type of utility. So in the end, it's all about helping that student perform and develop across a wide bandwidth of the particular material. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you uh, a, a couple things that are related to how one might be able to do that. And so I'm going to switch over to the, 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 the software that we've got to, to do that. And we're gonna do that in just a moment here. <clears throat> All right, you should be able to see my screen now. I've switched over to the, what we call the Learning Cloud. That is our platform program that offers a preset a uh, way of that framework of the learn, learn it, do it, share it, prove it kind of thing in an organized dashboard based on what you as an individual institution have added, either of our own services that we offer in collections or what you've loaded yourself. So I'm just gonna walk you through a couple examples as an example of how a framework works that then applies those gaps that we've been talking about all along. So all along in, in the program, what individuals are wanting to do is that they're wanting to figure out what is gonna help them get their assignments done the most effective way and to be able to assess it. So we have built in major course areas to get you up and running, you know, the turnkey approach types of things. You can go in from a strategy or a instructional kind of bit. It rewards individuals how, what they've been learning so far or either in micro little bits or in the whole course itself. And then if you as an instructor has assigned something to a particular student, it would all show up here. So they have a real nice connection of what's assigned to them and how far they are in their progress. We've also guided you to a number of different modules that are really important for people's instruction, both on the instructor side and on the student acumen side that, you know, the, their own skill development, personal skills, as well as technical skills, as well as the career center kind of thing. And what's most popular, what people are really zeroing in lately. And just like what Natalie was referencing earlier, you can really see that a huge amount of emphasis in development, just of individual student skill, as well as professional, you know, adult career skills that you were even at the, at the academic levels, how to deal across the, the communities that they're serving and how that's changed in the last year and so on. And then we identify, of course, the feature programs and so on. So you can look at it just on the dashboard of what's popular. You can search in on, you know, we have a categories and that kind of thing. But the easiest way, what most people typically do is just look for things. So if we just look on, you're gonna see a whole bunch of different, so you can, it just looks at all throughout your entire collection of what's available and suggested things for elsewhere. But if you click on uh, a course, it's gonna show you a little bit of background about it. It's gonna show you the different aspects of that learn it area, which as you can see here, it's broken down into those segments of the particular learning. The do it are, is like the, the downloadable worksheets that they can work on. They can share it across their community. So, you know, across your classroom or across your institution. And then the prove it is where the assessments occur. So the way the work the, the, they work is that they all are organized in such a way that reinforces the variety of ways that people learn. Uh, they learn visually, of course, they learn by watching the transcript scroll while they go. You can see that I have intentionally, just, just for illustrative purposes, have shown that while the video is going and all the videos are in English uh, primarily, and then you can change the transcript to be in a language that, that either reinforces the language that they're learning or their native language. So it kind of helps reinforce that learning. 
And individuals learn at different paces. People learn out of order, uh, like Natalie had mentioned in the micro learning kind of section, or they might be methodical and work right down the, uh, the pathway based on what's assigned to them or just how they learn their learning path and so on. And if they switch over to other courses, it's just the same if they wanted to like, if we wanted to learn how to do use Zoom, if we had a little trouble getting onto this session or just in life, you they could take a Zoom course or you can take pieces of this if you're doing an online community communications course and you can do that as well. Another big aspect of the program is how you can add your own areas of instruction yourself. So this is what we spend a lot of time on. A lot of things is how to develop the different kinds of materials related to the gaps that you have related to your program. And in your, in your program, you want to most likely learn from what's existing to kind of build upon it, or you want to do some customizing things. So beyond the standard uh, reporting metrics within an administrative thing that you would expect to see based on the usage, the time spent, the assignment adjustments, all that is the customizing area. And that's what I want to just show you briefly. You have the ability when you're in there to help you with this bridging this gap issue is to be able to work from what we've already professionally provided for you or to create your own process or hybrid of, the, of both. So with the pathways, the pathways is an area where you would combine a number of different thought leadership kind of concepts and you would be bringing together a number of different um, specific areas to learn across a myriad of content sources. So that would be like if you wanted to do an essential thing or about if you had an in-service for your faculty to do about strategies for learning or how to support students, all those kind of things. You could create a core material that then every member of your department does, will, would look at or your graduate students. Uh, like I, my daughter is a graduate student and is a TA. So there's a standard way of providing the information, but then, then they are assigned the various classes that they're working at with. You can do that. You can create your own. You can create your own and have it very specifically tied to you. Anything that you create on your own is specific to your institution. You can add modules from what is available in our collections or you can create your own stuff. And then when you're done, you can uh, badge it. So that, again, that's that mastery badge that they could do in addition to just taking assessments. They can do that as well. Another thing, an area in there is custom modules. And this is what's used most commonly. It, it is to create a course that's going to make sense to you, uh, and that's convening different pieces that's going to augment something that you're all offering as your larger concept for your class. Like if you're in a communications class or a biology class or something, you can add in things to support your particular curriculum by creating courses and then so on. So if you were to go in, you can go in and create a course and work from something that's there. And then you would create the information about the course, where it's programmed and so on. And then you can start building from existing sites of what are available to you within the program itself. So there's lots of different ways that you can do that as well. Another thing that it seems to be really popular within uh, this type of environment for bridging between what you typically have done in classroom to doing only online is creating your own assessments. You have the ability to create your own tests here. You can upload information for tests that you want. You can just use some uh, uh, areas that you want to just start from scratch with and create your own courses from which then you can assign and then get scoring from there. So you can bridge that gap between what is available to you and what you do on your own. In, a, in a, like a turnkey, step one, do this, step two, do this, upload this, publish, and it's available. And again, everything that's available is only available to your institution. You can really be personalized when you do any customizing. Uh, every student and every administrator that has, uh, has the ability to see what their training is that's specific to their institution and so it, it, this is where all of that customized training would be located. And then once you're back at the main site, it is included in any of the searches that you've got. You also can then link that to your LMS. Like if you happen to use Canvas, you can assign different aspects of things in here to go directly to Canvas. 
whiteboard or blackboard or whatever your particular uh, services that you that you care to. So this is just an overview of showing that there there are a lot of utilities that are available for you to utilize with with InfoBase and within this learning cloud to take what you currently have and what you currently can do, the br we, bridging it with what we've got, strategies if you need to skill up a bit to learn some things for yourself, as well as just actually put it into practice. So it's got that, that really multi-dimensional one-stop shop way for you to get what you're looking for within your academic community. I think at this stage, looking at the timing, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over here and there's just one final slide I'm gonna go through here and then we're gonna switch over to the question and answer area. And when we get to, when we get to that, I just wanted to remind everybody that it, it's only gonna speed up. The, the, the gaps that you're facing aren't gonna go away. They're only gonna become more acute because we're just keep, we're now acknowledging them and we need to figure out together how to get that done. And you're doing a lot of it already. We wanna make sure that we reinforce that. It's just that in many cases, a lot of people need to find a place to house it, augment it, get a little freshen up of how, you know, the next best practice thing that's, a, that's out there. And then also then apply it to your students as you finish up this term, and then you're preparing yourself for the next terms of how to utilize that, that all the, the information that's available to you and bring it into it to support what you're trying to instruct in your particular course. So I think I'm going to turn it back over to to Mark. I think uh, we'll all the Natalie and I are going to stay on, but uh, Mark has been uh, triaging the questions that have come in, and uh, we can handle a few of those in the few remaining minutes, and we might end up uh, finishing up a little early, probably. Great, um, thank you, Brad. Um, looking at the questions, we got a few in there right now. Um, I would encourage folks if you do have questions um, about anything that you've seen today. Uh, feel free to drop those in that Q&A module um, and we'll take uh, as many as we've got time for. Um, so while, while folks are putting in some questions there, um, we've got one that came through from, from Carl early on. Um, and it's, I think, really a point of clarification. Um, and Carl asks, is this content available to libraries who already subscribe to In InfoBase? Or is this another product that, that they can purchase? So how, does, how do folks access um, all, of, all of this information? Sure, excellent question and, and uh, appreciate that. InfoBase is, is really large. So we have a lot of different uh, areas of our business. So if you have any of our existing reference or video collections, which there are many, uh, the Learning Cloud is an addition. What Learning Cloud, you can think of it as, as the learning platform from which that you could take some of the elements of all of that reference or video material and insert those segments of a video or segments of a reference link or the blogs that we offer into this curriculum, as well as we have collections that are specifically designed on top of what you may already have for technology skill and instructional design and you know to really build the acumen of the student and the the, the educator so it's it's an addition to the the material and with in a variety of packages great great um we've got another question here from from sharon that that just came in um and she's asking about uh the micro learning segments and sharon says what went into the decision to make the microlearning segments two minutes long? Is there research that suggests that's an optimal length or what went into that, that decision-making process? Why, why chop stuff up so small? Okay, uh, Natalie, do you wanna take that one? Sure, that is a great question. So our research from our subject matter experts who developed our learning framework um, did research not just in instructional strategies, but also psychology. Uh, this is something you even see as you use social media now that the average person's attention span every year uh, becomes less and less. Not every video segment on our platform is two minutes long. We do aim, especially for our technology skills, to be about a minute and a half to two minutes long to keep you engaged based on our studies on the psychology of attention spans, as well as what's effective instructionally. Um, you will see in a few different modules, like in our examples, they could vary. They could be longer, seven, eight minutes long. 
but as we endeavor to create new content, we are really paying attention to all of our limited attention spans in today's world. Uh, which reminded that when the courses are designed, they're, con they're designed in completion, and then we segmentize them down based on the, the appropriate learning um, next comments. So think of it like a two minute bullet point as you're building across a, a larger concept. So it helps them. It also helps the in instructors assign it at a segmental level uh, rather than you know, assigning a 10 minute section and say, let's watch from number, you know, minutes three through six, you know, just it helps uh, focus the, the learning to get exactly what they want when they want. It. Great, great. Um, I see that we've had a, a question that, that just came in um, that I think that uh, maybe a lot of folks out there have, um, and it's about getting a copy of the recording. And I would just say, um, for everybody out there that yes, we are recording today's session. And if you signed up, you should get um, a copy of the recording within about 24 hours of the event. Um, so be on the lookout for that tomorrow. Um, so looking at uh, some of the other questions we've got here. Um, Ahmed says, I'm familiar with, with something like Moodle, um, is this system like that? Or, or, or you know, it's, does it work sort of similarly? Or, or how, how do the two compare, I would guess, is, is part of sort of in that question too. Yeah, so I can take that question. So Moodle is a learning management system that is regularly referred to as an LMS. We integrate with Moodle. So if you're using something like Moodle, D2L, Canvas, Schoology, um, LibGlides, uh, ClassLink, Google Classroom, um, we integrate with all of those LMSs. Um, while our platform is not a full-fledged LMS, you do have the benefits of having some amazing authoring tools. Um, think about how you get an LMS and it provides you authoring tools, but it's empty of content. You need to fill it. Learning Cloud is different in that you get those authoring tools, plus you get content already preloaded. You could use the courses as is, like Brad mentioned, or you can customize them using our tools. Alternatively, you can build courses from scratch. So in that way, it's similar. I might suggest that it's slightly lighter, but what's great about it is if you are institution at large, uses one of those larger enterprise-wise LMSs, we definitely integrate using our LTI tools. Excellent. Um, so this is sort of a, a broad question uh, that just came in from Ibrahim. Um, and maybe it uh, should go to you, Natalie, but if you don't have anything to say, happy to kick it over to Brad. Um, Ibrahim says, do you think that some specialties are, are more difficult or challenging to teach in sort of this distance learning way. Um, and Ibrahim says, you know, something like the medical field or, or those sorts of things. I also think about um, like my wife is a scientist. So thinking about labs and things like that, that are maybe more difficult to transition to um, online spaces. So do you, do you find, or do you think that there, that, you know, the, the specialty really impacts um, the effectiveness of online learning or, or, is, or can online learning really accommodate a wide, wide variety of subject areas? So I want Brad to weigh in on this as well, <laughs> but I will say um, I do think some specific practical fields will always require some aspect of in-person instruction, but the great thing about online instruction and learning is you can build up so many skills before you even get to that in-person portion. So I do see where, especially in the medical field, as you mentioned, or science, STEM, there is a need for some hands-on research, but also think pre-COVID, how many hours we all spent in libraries with textbooks. We can create a very rich learning environment online using especially these kinds of frameworks like our learn it, do it, share it, prove it framework that's mm -hmm. proven 
to be effective for online and remote instruction to these specialty areas. But I do think just like we all have been in this past year, we do need to be creative and maybe opening our minds to new solutions. Um, I think I do have uh, the benefit of with a large organization like Infobase, we have such a wide range of materials from streaming video, these e-learning courses, databases. I do see the amazing capabilities that no matter where you are, you have access to world class content tools and technology to aid you in learning. Yeah, I, I would add that um, to the, the person who asked the question and just in general, there's really two things that I see that specialties really illustrate the value of online instruction and makes it much more efficient uh, in cases, but then it also opens the challenge. So the first one is like take labs, for example, you know, I have a daughter who's a neuroscience graduate student. So she teaches all of her TA related students, all the students that she relates with online in advance. All the techniques are there. They go through it. They have a simulated video, what they're going to be dealing with related to the brain. But then when they get to the lab, the, there, there are certain disciplines, I'm sure, like science is a big one, that you really need hands-on at some point. It turns the lab into more of a practicum. They can get in there and really focus in on the time that they have available to, to learn the material, but they pre-learned it so they can do, get it set up. So it's that pre-learning aspect that is really a key that's very cross-disciplinary. The second thing I wanted to add to uh, or and emphasize like what Natalie mentioned was the online instruction cross discipline really allows that instructor to personalize and institutionalize, localize the, the, the instruction. So if you're working from a, a text or you're working from a particular journal, you're working on a particular assignment, um, you can do so clearly like you've always been doing, but one thing you can do it, like you do in a lecture is that you can provide the supplementary stuff that reinforces the concept and builds the skill up to really maximize that learning. And doing it in that cross-disciplinary interactive way really engages your brain and is gonna help with retention and that applicable knowledge that is uh, real, real, real world skills that is a nice balance between the, the, the classroom education that they would be getting uh, regardless of, of how they're dealing with their online instruction. That's why I think one of the interesting things that we'll see over time with how well equipped the, the current student population is as they go into the workforce or their professional life, how that, how that is affected by having that real world skill come right along with the traditional classroom instruction. Perhaps, Brad, you're saying the labs could be the do it portion of the framework. One could say, yeah. That's good. I Excellent. try to get my puns in wherever I can. <laughs> <laughs> A nice turn, Natalie. Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I would just encourage folks, if you do have questions, drop them in that Q&A. Um, we've got another one here that um, it looks like came in a little while ago. Um, and Ahmed also asks, and I think we sort of dealt with this a little bit in the presentation itself, but maybe um, to broaden it out a little bit, um, Ahmed says, is, is there a demo or a demonstration of the database and system? Maybe that, um, you know, for, for folks starting out with, with the system at their institution, what sort of um, learning opportunities are there to get people up and running with it um, right off the bat? Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell that one. That they, they, uh, we have two primary ways to do that. One, we obviously have videos. So in the, the idea is that what's again, just like within the learning cloud, the platform itself, you can learn and do it at the same time. Like, uh, you know, most people work with multiple monitors. Now you have one monitor showing the video, you're just doing it. Just that's another reason the value of micro learning. You have that little bit of a two minute segment on some aspect of a technology like Excel or something, you can actually do it, look at it, do it, look at it, do it until you have it mastered, the same kind of thing. We also have for, especially at the university level, we have onboarding and ongoing training services available at that you know, very specific level that we can work with individuals as well as in, in, a, in a group, like a department or something like that. And then everything's recorded very similar and, they, and we use Zoom. So we, it would be very similar to what you'll see in the playback of this 
of how that would be interacting, but it would be very contextualized for your specific application to get you up and running. Yeah, and I think, Ahmed, if you'd like your own demo, that you're very interested in our platform, that's something that we can arrange for you. Mm -hmm. um, also, on April 21st, I will be giving a webinar on using our authoring tools. So if you want more of me, mm -hmm. you can sign up on infobase.com. Excellent, excellent. All right, um, looking over the questions, it looks like we've gotten to all the ones that have come in so far. Um, if you have that one last burning question that you'd like to drop in there, um, I would say hurry along. Um, There's one question that didn't come up, Mark, that, uh, yes. that came up in the last set. We did this recently with, again, with a very specific group of uh, active editions. And that question was really interesting. I hadn't thought of it. And is that based on, and it, it plays up to what Natalie and I have referenced about the personalization of the, of the instruction. Is that one thing that's nice about uh, being an instructor at a specific institution, there you're bringing your expertise as well as the institutional culture and, and teaching to the student. That's one of the reasons the student is going to your institution. Um, and, and so bringing, why I bring that up is that there was a question or a concern that if we do custom training, a custom, uh, if we offer a platform for custom um, uh, instruction, it's gonna be broadcast or socially made available. There's you no know, potential violations of copyright, all these different things that, you know, the, the, the instructor's brand is, you know, is a lot of how they instruct and the thing. That is completely secure. So when you do something within our platform, it's only within your institution. It's just, in, it's just guarded. It's, you know, it's part of our privacy rules that we use. You know, there's some really strict privacy rules around the world and we adhere to them. <laughs> and we're a publisher, so we totally understand the brand and understand that, that authoritative instruction that you as a subject matter expert for your particular discipline bring to your students and it's, it's kept inside. That's like that share it part as well as the customizing parts. Just it's very we we take that very seriously. That was a question that brought up before, but I thought it might be relevant to this since we brought in so much evidence to this custom part of it. Absolutely, absolutely. And looking through our our questions there, um, I don't see that we've gotten any any additional. Um, so I will just take a moment here um, to say thank you so much, Natalie um, and Brad, for taking the time to do this today, to walk us through um, uh, all of the <laughs> everything um, today. Um, I would remind, I would also say to the folks joining us out there um, on the other end of the line, thank you for joining us. We appreciate your taking the time um, to, to participate in this webinar. Um, I would also encourage you as we're getting ready to sign out here um, to take just a couple of minutes to fill out a brief survey that should pop up on your browser. Um, should, you know, five minutes or less, shouldn't take a whole lot of your time, um, but we really appreciate the feedback that we do get through that. Um, so if you could do that, we'd really appreciate it. And um, as I have mentioned a couple of times, we did record the session. So please do be on the lookout for that email. Um, with a link to the recording. And with that, I will say thank you once again, and we hope to see you in the near future on another webinar. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.